Today we're going to learn about unit conversion. So if I asked you to change five feet to inches, you'd probably do it. You'd say, Dr. T, just multiply by 12. What about if I asked you to change 36 inches to feet? You'd say, that's easy, Dr. T, you just divide by 12. Why is it that you multiply by 12 in one case and divide by 12 in the other? You know that you should, but you can't exactly explain why. So today we will learn why. So, you could always take that five feet and multiply it by one. That doesn't change the quantity, it's just multiplying it by one. Even if I write that one as 12 over 12, or 12 inches over 12 inches, I'm not changing the quantity. I'm just multiplying it by one, because the top of the fraction is equal to the bottom of the fraction. The sneaky little secret here is I take that bottom 12 inches and I replace it with one foot, because 12 inches is the same as one foot. So now the top is equal to the bottom, which means I'm multiplying it by one. This lets the feet cancel, because anything that appears on the top and the bottom cancels. And then let me just write the five feet as five feet over one. And you can see that when I multiply out the fractions, I get five times 12 inches on the top, because the inches haven't canceled, and one times one gives me one on the bottom. So I get that five feet is equal to 60 inches, exactly. That's why we multiply by 12. Now, if I had started with inches, then I would set up the fractions so that the inches would be on bottom and the 12 would have to go with it. That's why when you go from inches to feet, you divide by 12 instead of multiplying by 12. So what are the steps to doing this process? Uh, step zero, you write down the starting quantity. Step one, you put an empty fraction next to it. Step two, you want to write in the units that you want to cancel. Remember, units on top cancel with units on bottom, and units on bottom cancel with units on top. Step three, you write the units in that you want to have at the end. Step four, you have to write in the numbers so the top of the fraction is equal to the bottom of the fraction. Step five, you multiply it out, and you'll get your answer. So let's do an example. Let's convert 146 centimeters to meters. This is a really easy one. So the initial quantity, I put an empty fraction in, and I want to cancel the centimeters, so I'm going to put them on bottom to cancel the centimeters on top right now. And I want to get meters, so those go on top. So now the question is, what numbers need to go in the fractions so that the top is the bottom? One meter is not one centimeter. One meter is how many centimeters? Well, you should know this. How many cents are in a dollar? How many years are in a century? Or if you learn a Romance language like Spanish, cent, ciento, cien, right? So it's a hundred. So one meter is equal to a hundred centimeters. So write it in there. The centimeters will cancel. Write it, once again, I will write the 146 centimeters is 146 over 1, just so that you can see how it multiplies out. And you get 1.46 meters. And so we've just learned that 146 centimeters equals 1.4 meters. Of course, seeing all this, my students just ignore it and say, that's stupid, Dr. T, that's an awful lot of work. Why can't I just move the decimal over two places? Uh, and the answer is, you can't. It's, it's way too easy to screw that up. How are you going to remember that it's two places to the right versus left. How do I know I'm moving the decimal to the left when I'm going from centimeters to meters and to the right in the other direction? So I, I basically have you memorizing one step that we can't explain why we're doing. And the other thing is we don't learn anything in that process and also we, it's, it's magic. We can't explain where it came from. The magic is move the decimal. Let's try another problem. Let's suppose I see something moving at one and a half kilometers a day and I want to know how many kilometers an hour that is. So, it's a slightly harder conversion, though not that hard. So I write down my initial quantity, and then next to it I have to put an empty fraction. And then, what are the units I want to cancel? I want to cancel the days. So I'm going to put days on the top of my empty fraction to cancel the days that started on the bottom. And then on the bottom, I'm going to put hours, because those are the units that I want to end with. How many hours are in a day? Hopefully you know that one day is the same as 24 hours. So now we multiply it out, and we know that the days cancel with the days. So I get 1.5 kilometers over 24 hours, which in a calculator gives me 0 0.0625 kilometers per hour. Let's do one more problem, slightly more difficult. A uh, two-step problem. I want to change 7,800 millimeters per minute to meters per second. So let's say I'm watching like a little snail move 7,800 millimeters every minute. I want to know how many meters per second that is. So it's a harder problem, but the steps are still the same. You want to write out the initial quantity, you put in an empty fraction, and then you decide what units you want to cancel. So in this case, we've got two units to cancel. 
we want to cancel the millimeters and change them to meters, and we want to change the minutes and put them into seconds. So let's change the millimeters first. So I'm going to put millimeters on bottom, and I'm going to put meters on top. Uh, that'll cancel the millimeters and give me meters. The question is, how many millimeters are in a meter? Well, if you look at mil in most Romance languages, Italian, Spanish, Latin, uh, French, Creole, Portuguese, uh, mil is thousand. It just happens that English has this word thousand, which is from Old English, like German, you use the word thousand. But most of the Romance languages, it's mil. Uh, and you might also recognize that mil looks like the word mile. That's because the mile originally was a thousand paces of a Roman soldier. So that's why the word looks so similar. So it should be a thousand millimeters to a meter, which is something that you should memorize. So we get the millimeters to cancel, which is great, that's what we wanted. And now I just have to figure out how to cancel those minutes and get seconds. So I'm gonna put the minutes on top to cancel the minutes on bottom. I'm gonna put the seconds on bottom because seconds are what I wanna get on the bottom in the end. And I hope you know that one minute is the same as 60 seconds. So you write it in there, you multiply it on it. The millimeters canceled, the minutes canceled, and then you just multiply out the numbers. So on top, 7,800 times one times one, on the bottom, one times a thousand times 60. So I get 7,800 meters on top, and I get 60,000 seconds on bottom, so 0.13 meters per second. So we've learned that 7,800 millimeters per minute is the same as 0.13 meters per second.